Welcome to the Change Collective podcast where we celebrate incredible stories of social leaders who made a real impact in their communities and the world beyond. Today we are super excited to have Saurabh Sharma, who is the group head for CSR at Tata Power. Saurabh's professional and personal journey is immensely inspirational and truly out of the ordinary. He was one amongst the 101 most impactful CSR leaders globally, not just for one year but for two consecutive years. We're absolutely honored to have you on our podcast, Saurabh. We can't wait to share your story with all the change makers listening to the podcast today. Welcome. for having me here on this podcast it's truly a great honor for me to be on this podcast and sharing my journey on csr and of course the developmental sector before getting into the csr space thank you so much once again thanks sir i think having said that you've had more than 2 years of professional experience under your belt and you've had a quite an eventful professional journey you've yeah. worked with the different nonprofits in the disability and development in sectors teamed up with ngos government folks and even research and published paper on water conservation and livelihoods for fishermen and now we are heading sustainability and csr across the country for tata power and you've been recognized for it and applauded for it globally but before we dive into all the professional achievements that you've done we want to hear your story right we would love to hear that infamous what up our story of where it all began for you so the journey has been exciting i mean uh, sometimes it happens that you have those kind of inherent desires or aspirations to be in certain space and profession but you don't know where during your school days and till you attain those kind of maturity but the childhood passion was of course to be with the community and be in the culture and to be with those people help those people and at that time it was largely uh, the interest and the platforms available was uh, the school clubs or the interact mm. clubs or the rotary clubs so we used to go and volunteer from the school and we used to participate in certain volunteering activities in those days suddenly after passing the higher secondary uh, we were just searching out of what kind of professional courses we can be into i mean you will be amazed to know that very few people in my city and that time in town was aware about the social work profession so if i speak to the school teachers if i speak to certain good professionals around us nobody was aware about those social work that aisa bhi kuch hota hai kya karke so the, those things were not those resources or those knowledge were not available so we just started roaming around with my friend took admission in certain graduation courses which was running around at that time i took admission in bcom i got the admission in ms university but suddenly something happened i mean something was not right going on inside and me and my friend we got a local train and we went to certain places finding something roaming around and then suddenly in the train we were sitting and chit chatting and having vada pav we were eating that vada pav and uh, we i had uh, a newspaper in my hand and suddenly saw the advertisement of a bachelor of social work course and i just expressed to my friend that see something is new and something related to what we were doing and let's find out if there is something like this and it's a professional course a degree course let's let's explore this and we actually went to that college and interacted with the dean and the directors of those college directly without knowing any background to what kind of courses and other things are there and that was the first i think first college uh, for undergraduate uh, people in gujarat at that time msw of course had a very good the universities and institutions at at that time but for the undergraduate bachelor of social work i didn't had any opportunity to look after all those resources whether uh, colleges there or not and that bcom admission we dropped and then we get into the bachelor of social work and that's how the whole journey of graduation started and then we suddenly came into a, a different thought process altogether but just to challenge myself is something which which i always believe in that i had to come out of that comfort zone and challenge myself and learn something new experience something new so that vada pav has actually changed the whole scenario you can say and today i am sitting in in the vada pav city also thank you so much sara for sharing this very inspirational story uh, mm-hmm. i must say i think it's amazing how despite all those obstacles you've kept on going and went after what you were passionate about and and, and it's great to see that you turned your childhood passion into your profession and i'm sure it's inspiring for a lot of other people who want to pursue a career in the sector maybe it's not looked at as a viable career option for many and i can't imagine how it might have been like back in early 2000s 
so i can very comfortably say that you've paved way for a lot of others to kind of step into it explore this as a career option and also is a great way to kind of give back to the community and the country that we live in right? absolutely so yeah absolutely moving on to the next questions that i wanted to kind of talk to you you worked in both the corporate ecosystem and the non-profit sector hmm. and moving from the non-profit sector to the corporate ecosystem can be quite a transition right what were some of the challenges that you faced when you look back can you even share a few milestones that you passed by along this journey yeah so one of the important interest at that time was after passing out from udaipur school of social work uh, i got an opportunity to be in one of the best institution which was headed by uh, an an iim passed out dr bhushan punani and nandini rawal so so from udaipur i again came back to ahmedabad because i had something in my mind very much attached to to do to get into the diversity and inclusion space at that time so at, i mean if you see the pwd act and all those it was it is too too old and there is a and, and the bit of reform is now happening into that yeah, yeah. a lot of categories have been improved in this mm-hmm. so but that that time if you see in 2005 2004 uh, it was a challenging sector so i pick up uh, that sector and i started working with blind people association ahmedabad uh, the institute had an association with, with many global institutions in terms of uh, working with people with disabilities and special abilities uh, and and that was the journey which actually helped me to think in a different manner altogether one is that they have a very rigorous training program they actually uh, make you uh, feel how a person with disability would be whether it is visually impaired low vision or it is an person having some disorder with the mobility so all those experiences they they make you feel they give you training in such a manner with blind folds and with all the white canes and all those to walk on the road walk on the streets to to feel the rupee note and to feel the coins and all those and then understand so kafi aise examples us time pe wo humko training mein bhi diya karte the ki aapne suna hai kabhi ke kisi किसी विजुअली uh, इम्पेयर्ड को या किसी ऐसे जो डिसेबिलिटी से जूझ रहे हैं उनको कभी सांप ने काट लिया कभी कुत्ते ने काट लिया कभी कुछ हुआ वी नेवर हियर ऑल दो थिंग्स राइट सो दो सिक्स सेंस काइंड ऑफ ए थिंग विच इज ऑपरेटिंग इन देयर सिस्टम इज समथिंग एल्स एंड दैट यू हैव टू फील वेन यू आर वर्किंग विद दैम और वेन यू आर ट्रेनिंग सो दैट वॉज द पीरियड वेन अ टोटली डिफरेंट एक्सपीरियंस वी वी थॉट टू बी एन अ प्रोफेशनल सोशल वर्कर कमिंग आउट फ्रॉम एन एस टीम इंस्टीट्यूट एंड यू हैव all the professional expertise but when you get into the emotional angle of it i mean csr is always a diverse sector and you have to be in that emotions to understand the community needs you have to be empathetic you have to play different role while you are dealing with stakeholders and all those things so this set of experience was totally different when you were doing your field work and now you are getting into the training program where you have to deal with those kind of i mean people with special abilities and so that experience was there and it has actually helped me to gain lot of experience lot of learning lot of maturity in terms of dealing with people or dealing with scenarios dealing with cases and to bring actual impact so that was the three year period for me from 2004 to 2007 maybe and then i switched to corporate but before that i got an opportunity through blind people association to work with people who are who were actually visually impaired and there was an international council also for that with whom i was working with very closely i brought certain advocacy level changes policy level changes in gujarat when it came to the people struggling with or suffering with spinal injury so i was based out of kutch bhuj and which was hit by the 2001 earthquake and still people were struggling so in 2001 i went there for the volunteering per se on a personal level and we have been chosen by many other institutes to volunteer for different services at that, that time so that 10 20 days of period could be one of the reason which has triggered to be in the pwd sector for me and i continued with that for 3 years so community based rehabilitation project was something which was driven by me in kutch so i worked for spinal injury patients over there who is actually having bed sores and continuously sitting and sleeping at one place so i was dealing with those people and i went to government of gujarat with of course help from blind people association and a comprehensive rehabilitation center over there which is again headed by one of the fine uh, doctor and surgeon uh, dr gyaneshwar rao in kutch 
so i took help of uh, all those people and did an advocacy in uh, government of gujarat and and the result was that uh, i was able to mobilize uh, resources for them some physiotherapy doctors visiting all the spinal injury cases uh, in kutch gujarat the ngos implementing where i was associated with them so i took the opportunity to give the, all the transportation facility to them and take all the doctors on a monthly basis for the dressing and all those things so that was a good reform which still people are getting benefit out of that after so many years so there were multiple such opportunities and i also at that time due with the development sector i was working with training people on community based rehabilitation so i was able to train more than 150 people at that time oh, at, wow. a very, uh. early, at a very early stage of my career so that was one of the other achievements or impact you can see i was able to bring in and after this few years of experience i i wanted to again go back to the projects what globally it was happening or talking people were talking about and that was millennium development goals right so i got an opportunity to be in the institute headed by dr sara bhai and dr dilip surkar from the nehru foundation i was part of the undp project at that time and the micro planning of dungarpur district was something which was given to me each district and state has to present their own status on mdg so that the planning exercise could be done properly and the execution on sustainability and other factors of mdg could be taken up so i took that opportunity and it was a one year uh, project which i completed in 8 months and presented to government of rajasthan and that was something which was appreciated then gradually the whole journey of going back to the csr because that again started buzzing csr as in space as a profession yeah, yeah. i mean you will not find such story that the ngo sector or the director with whom i am associated with he actually pushed me hard to go get into the corporate so i was in kutch and suddenly uh, walking in the office late night and he he called me and he said sir i want you to meet someone and uh, that was the period when tata power got the first ultra mega power plant in kutch gujarat and that was 4000 megawatt which india doesn't had till 2006 7 we never had 4000 megawatt unit at one place and that oh, wow. too with super super critical technology mm-hmm. uh, all the pollution level level mm-hmm. in control the machinery all the uh, international machinery is into it and, uh, and having indonesian coal based mm-hmm. uh, south african coal based with low low calorific value and all those so uh, all those things was uh, quite exciting and this project for tata power it was like they wanted a person who can actually get on the ground and see meet the people and do the actual need assessment mm-hmm. rather than doing it from the office and getting into the plans and submitting it to the different financial institutions so this project was actually supported by international finance corporation adb korean exim and and many such consortium of mm-hmm. bank people where financial institutions were involved and the first stage was that we have to do the need assessment and submit a, a proposal to the financial institutions Yeah. for funding of the project and it was something around more than 17500 or 18000 plus crores of uh, project came in coming up oh, wow. for uh. 4000 megawatt and this was something which was at that time mr ratan tata and government of india has decided mm-hmm. that they will be coming up with such 9 to 12 umpps across india and to meet the power requirements of course in india at that time so that was the genesis to this discussion and my director at that time the person told me that you have to meet this guy and you are fit for this position you should get into and forget about the ngo and and our institution you should just go and do this need assessment for them and i was like uh, no sir i don't want to leave but uh, i'll definitely work uh, on the need assessment project but that sounds exciting to me and uh, let it, let me be with your organization take this project as part of the uh, ngo implementation program do the need assessment and then i'll decide whether to join because at that time it was so much of i mean taking a projects and doing it completing it and less of aspiration to join a corporate kind of a thing so that was the feeling at that time but yeah of course if i see my life trajectory life career planning of course i had a plan to be with corporate and get something which is stable of course there could there could there are cultural shift in this because you, you people i mean working with with ngo mm-hmm. and then development sector and then getting into a power sector and having no background of csr mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. background of land acquisition no background of 
resettlement rehabilitation no back, background of community unrest and mob behavior so all those things uh, i mean it was a complete cultural shift which happened so of course i took the project my director said that no you'll have to uh, leave the organization he pushed me hard to join i joined tata par i started working on that project and uh, i was the only one csr guy at that time in gujarat had handling a 4000 megawatt csr program so it was a complete ground zero for me and establishing the whole team doing the need assessment through partnerships uh, getting ngos people do, doing the implementation work mm-hmm. understanding the whole bit of community and then the and you don't have those kind of policies and processes in place when you are landing fresh on the ground right and yeah, and when yeah. you are sitting so heavily with 4000 megawatt the expectations were so high and then there is a pressure of performing and maintaining the compliance and the standards because the project is uh, heavily funded by the uh, global international mm. organizations right so those kind of challenges was of course there but from mitigation to sustainability was the journey which i learned and which i executed uh, mm. in, in, in by by joining tata power coming from ngo background to corporate the cultural shift hierarchical differences in the ngo sector and the corporate sector of course that's big and one has to understand one has to use their maturity to be into that and and so development sector ask you for an impact development yeah, sector yeah. ask ask you to connect with the community right mm-hmm. for the corporates it would could be always the performance matrix which is there right the hierarchical differences and then there is also a a, con, a shared value concept of business being taken care of or business mm-hmm. being important for csr also so you have to play that role of a bridge do the role of a catalyst and then being the community voice also at times mm-hmm. and being the the business voice also at times so that's the kind of the shift which happened and and that was sudden that was huge so uh, overcoming all those experiences and overcoming all those bringing those maturity into you is was something uh, which i learned at that time and that has helped a lot so i had almost 11 to 12 years of journey on mm-hmm. field of with with umpp ultra mega power plant and then on 2018 uh, tata power thought of having me in the corporate sector and run the whole implementation and facilitate all the field team from sitting at bombay and and designing the program reviewing the proposal doing the partnerships bringing those networks into it and to and to make it a strategy wise uh, strategic approach towards the whole csr implementation so that's how the whole journey pratyush uh, nice. started nice that yeah that's really inspiring to hear so thanks for sharing that again i think one thing that really resonated with me was empathy over pity right when you're working with people with Absolutely. disabilities unless you put yourself in their situation rather than mm-hmm. looking at them as people who can't do a certain thing it's mm-hmm. more about identifying what they can do amazingly well and yes. enabling them to do that and yeah, yeah. i i feel like working in the sector social sector set up a great foundation for you for a successful career in the csr space and what you said about obstacles definitely rings true again i think despite having to work with so many different stakeholders government from the sector and again like corporates so it, it can't be an easy task and it, it's yeah. not easy to mobilize such huge numbers of people so yeah and you see the kind of expectations no i mean mm-hmm. when you are associated with a corporate and when you are associated with a development sector implementing mm-hmm. grassroots organization one of the factors which i realized was always uh, to understand the expectations of the stakeholders right so achanak se logo ko pata chal jata hai that heavy industry like tata power adani reliance whatever i mean you yeah. name it all the business tycoons in india and and all the industry were there at that time so we had adani as our neighbor we had jsw we had uh, cement company and all those it was flooded with all the um, development uh, happening in the and the development was sudden <coughs> and after 2001 a new city new culture started developing in 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 kutch region and with with the policies of government it was a special economic zone there was tax free areas and industrial uh, development happening so people came and that was a great business opportunity for all the business houses in that mm. and suddenly you can see you can feel that influx happening in that area no people coming from different areas different geographies as uh, white collar blue collar whatever you name it so i have seen all those 
चेंजेस हैपनिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी राइट फ्रॉम वेजिटेबल वेंडर्स टू अल्क सप्लायर or to a major shopkeeper kind of a thing people started thinking about making money getting into contracts and all the so all mm. those changes have seen and then what happens if this sudden changes happen being a csr professional the duty is to maintain those expectations to mm. tell them that boss if you are getting the compensation for your land which you have sold as a private entity there is also a responsibility that you should save this money yeah right yeah. because sudden income or or mm. revenue in anybody's family house is something like main aaj car le lunga main mobile le lunga i'll, I'll mm. do something else but of course gujarat being entrepreneur in mindset they have this business acumen very high but those areas also faced lot of influxes because of industrial belt coming up industrial development happening and being a professional we had to be continuously engaged so two two three things at that time was very important was managing the expectations keeping away the people who were coming up with the wasted interest at that time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then you have to maintain those communications regularly 24 by 7 with the community because that was the only communication if that stops everything stops so kind yeah, of thing yeah. so so people have their own voices and nobody is there to listen and then from that mitigation angle you take your program your program starts gearing up and you are able to design something with them and then those program after say 2 3 years have started giving you results so that's something very critical when it comes from development sector to the corporate sector csr per se and nowadays people have to understand those kind of because there got a lot of exposures the field experiences of youth now versus what we had i mean nothing good or bad kind of a thing but i do believe that a csr professional whoever is getting into the corporate sector has to have the field experiences grassroots experiences mm. and then come up and then sit in the corporate and, and share with experiences otherwise you are losing something on ground and, yeah. and if that emotions or implementation struggle you have not have in your life then it would be very difficult for a csr guy to establish and to to help others to help the larger community per se so that's something which i got very early in my stage and got that information or exposure to because of the tata powers ultra mega mm-hmm. project coming up there yeah nice nice 100% agree with you sarav i think it's very important to have that pulse of the ground like what's happening mm-hmm. on ground and what the actual need is what do the people need and again mm-hmm. it's meeting these expectations with what you have at tata power okay. um so yeah it's really incredible how you've managed this so far and taken it to this level and as one of the driving forces behind tata power csr program i just wanted to understand the tata side of it as well right like tata has done phenomenal work in the social sector for multiple years now just uh, talking talking about tata power i just wanted to ask you who is tata power serving uh, what's the cause that tata power wants to work towards so i mean we have a very long history associated with the community development work and 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 that too strategically when people in india never started off thinking in those lines right so mm-hmm. if you go to the history of founders it it was always giving back to the society it was never making profit kind of a thing so if you go to tata steel you will see the tagline we also make steel we also make power lighting up lives so those kind of uh, vision and strategy which is there with tata group right and of course in 2006 uh, 7 strategically there were a lot, lot of things to be done in terms of uh, reorganizing rethinking restrategizing the whole csr hmm. piece of tata power tata power was largely focusing on the generation because at that time it was all generation coal based thermal power plants yeah. and and this whole green or renewable energy kind of was not there at such so it was all generation it was all uh, filled with a lot of spontaneous or sudden responses to the community uh, to give them back uh, in terms of whatever they are required there was less of uh, strategic csr in terms of so that was the that was the scenario for all the industries who were doing right it was not only tata power tata power of course had an had some kind of an background like whatever we were doing it was i mean when i get into fully into designing it was earlier the health programs or the mm-hmm. essential enablers piece 
for the people it was rural electrification kind of a thing which was happening so a lot of things they I mean, would if you divide it distribute it, it would be like 80% of the community infrastructure work support going on and 20% of softer elements with life skills and with many other health programs and all those things happening but in 2009 i think if i am not wrong was the trigger point when the vice president hr when the whole management of tata power came together at that time i think mr shankar venkateswaran who was heading the sustainability organization at that time so he was the one who came to us and sat with us and decided to strategize everything fresh right from identification of community to defining the geography defining the programs what sort kind of programs we should be and at that time we started talking about sustainability and we started talking about coming out from the mitigation and planning for uh, a well designed program which actually makes impact and at that time tata power started talking about the impact assessment piece mm-hmm. uh, so all those things were way back in 2008 and 9 and and now we are hearing all these things right so when the uh, mca came up with the rules and regulation the compliance norm impact assessment norm so we started way back we we started way back in 2008 9 by doing impact assessment and at that time we also had the social audit which was largely mm-hmm. taken over by the SROI concept tata power with the business transformation now getting out from the generation to to the green energy kind of a thing which is a national commitment and commitment to government of india also from tata power side to be carbon neutral to have zero emissions we also have an, uh, an aggressive targets to get into the renewable space and mm-hmm. and day by day every day we are getting bigger into that so with those changes happening we evaluated very early in our uh, professional journey when tata power management thought of having a trust implementing properly through a trust mechanism and then thinking of, of what kind of uh, thematic areas picking up thematic areas to to take csr forward so in 2009 we came up with five seven thematic areas tata power decided across india we were we were doing similar kind of act- activities in terms of the community what kind of need is there but everything fallen into those thematic areas was was mm. important so so in 2009 we came up livelihood as a thematic area skilling as a thematic area health uh, and hygiene as a thematic area education up, again uh, becoming very big at that time and and one of the important flagship at that time was on the drinking mm. water and water conservation mm-hmm. so wherever we landed because we were the power industry of course using a mm. lot of water from the natural resources usage of water is high mm-hmm. in power sector industry power sector so we have to in response to the community we felt that of course there was no compliance other than the yeah. mof guidelines and environmental clearances and all those things but keeping those aside it was the csr team who initiated all the water projects and i got an experience opportunity to work mm-hmm. with very good organizations in kutch on the water sector and we also got lot of the resources developed so that after say 5 7 years uh, when we take a back seat and and program is mature and sustainable when we hand over to the gram panchayats or the local bodies uh, it should not be like if tata power is out the program is closed or shut mm-hmm. so, so we trained uh, lot of village level volunteers and we have more than 500 um, uh, odd uh, numbers right now associated with us in gujarat only and we call them bhujal jankars so mm-hmm. people like iit gandhi nagar mm-hmm. win watson foundation along with tata power community development trust are, have worked extensively on water conservation and kutch being an arid area arid zone having less rain all those problems were there and today we can say that we have reached to some extent to create a water surplus area in a 10 km of radius mm-hmm. 21 villages more than 52000 people associated with us we have created water security plans over there so that it is handy and it can be used by anybody so if uh, the neighboring industry want to use it we are happy to share and that's the kind of relationship tata power is having with all the uh, neighboring industries or the institutions over there so that's one such example and then gradually uh, this took a shape of participatory groundwater management as a yeah. model so even now tata power is giving soft uh, support to the people uh, who want but infrastructure wise we have very less investment everything is supported by government every in gujarat everything is supported by people like iit gandhi nagar and mm-hmm. watson foundation so they came up they saw the model and joined hands with us and we created that um, resource for everyone 
and i'm really very happy that i was part of that team creating that model in gujarat and from there the flagship concept started in tata power so gradually as per the need as per the requirement as per the suggestions from the csr committee as per the suggestions from the government of india we started standardizing things we started recollecting gathering things and the angle was totally towards sustainability of each and every program so if you see now i can tell you that at at time startup hour was having more than 170 interventions across india mm-hmm. today we have would be not more than 10 or 15 interventions Uh, but those interventions have been standardized those interventions mm. are seen or implemented in a manner which is actually sustainable for the people sustainable for the geography and livelihood being centered around everything we have transformed from infrastructure to livelihood now because we feel mm. livelihood is something which is important for each and every class of the society so our program should be in a manner which provides a sustainable livelihood to each segment of this society wherever we are so that's how the tata power fields or tata power strategize the, the csr programs nice nice thanks thanks so much sir for taking us through and although the number when you say hey 170 interventions to 10 interventions on paper it might look yeah. uh, as going down but absolutely uh, with the context that you've given us and especially when you're thinking this through the lens of sustainability through the lens yeah. that these programs continue working even without startup hours intervention in the future i think it, it's such yeah. a great uh, thing that you all have done here and what stuck with me is also the fact that you moved away from corporate philanthropy like just giving money and then forgetting it but rather investing in the same community that you operate in that will lead to sustainability by itself right like keeping the community that you work in or the environment that you work in happy and it's definitely gone beyond mandate or any legal requirements because <laughs> you guys have been working in the sector for such a long time so yeah superb thank you so much and and again i heard a lot of other names other collaborators that worked with you as well that was going to be my next question because tata is a household name tata is a name that turns heads so if anyone here that hey tata is doing such work in the social sector it's very easy for you guys to use that influence to get them to move get more people to join your mission and more people to work towards a common goal i can definitely see how the influence has been used in terms of policy level or uh, yeah. in terms of getting other organizations to get to work with you over these projects so my next question would be more a focus towards how have you been able to involve the people that you work with the employees of tata power in some of the initiatives that you guys work in tata power has a great culture of employee volunteering right so if you go to a normal uh, industry setup and interact with people people would say csr important nahi hai in an induction program or an orientation program but what the greatest part of this organization is that from day one whoever joins they are part of the employee volunteering platform i mean i personally go and take sessions to the new younger generation or the trainees or the interns who come and take sessions on employee volunteering and we have a very good structure the digital programs and platforms are also there where people can go and register themselves and do an self assessment opt for the volunteering opportunities throughout the year we have got skill based volunteering we have got mentoring that's the culture of tata power where people are motivated to do something for the society from day one and uh, be it a, a small cleanliness drive going into the villages going and interacting with the people and understand the sentiments because engineer working on the machine and when it comes to human capital it will be totally different so tata power recognizes this kind of in scenarios and situations where engineers has to also be sentimental so csr department we are the owners and we are the program designers and offer it to the employee volunteers and you will be happy to know that we have got some 23000 people in tata power as an employee and every year we are the top performers in terms of uh, of course it would look, look something odd to hear that how can you calculate the hours and make it mandatory for people to volunteer and how you are taking a target kind of a thing but that's the beauty of this program it is not mandatory but we do calculate the number of hours how much people have given to the volunteering so if you see every year in tata group tata power is the one who is 
sitting at the top notch achieving day by day huge numbers in volunteering yearly if you see you know 1.5 lakh volunteering hours every year which we achieve so that's how the the seriousness is i think in 2019 or 20 we were actually globally second in terms of volunteering hours and tcvh we we were equivalent to bank of america at that time before covid scenario and all those things <laughs> and when the whole virtual thing started you have to improve your content you have to improve the engagement level of the people so we struggled a lot during the <laughs> covid while because all the physical activities stopped and we have to go virtually provide them yeah, opportunity yeah. but at that time also we launched uh, volunteering from home concept <laughs> so just like work from home we started volunteering from home and all the digital uh, people we trained them we created content we help people with disabilities also by recording their course curriculums and all those so multiple mm-hmm. opportunities we provided this is an important piece employee volunteering but having said for tata power and for any csr professional as i mentioned earlier the important piece is your collaborative effort which you put into the program you seek collaborations you do network mm-hmm. and networking not for a publicity or showcasing your uh, csr work i, I mean, mm-hmm. it's rather collaborating for a meaningful program so creating a meaningful impact in the society so if i say 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 pratham is something which is working on learning improvement program since long they 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 they, they generate annual reports also why can't few organizations big organizations or small organizations come up by supporting such organizations and creating impact so if you see still we are lacking somewhere in those areas education as in sector we are lacking still there are learning improvement is in challenge for people in rural areas students in rural areas the teacher ratio student ratio is something which is challenging still mm. so all those so collaboration does make an impact so tata power do believe in that and we are proud that we have actually distributed our whole programs mm. or implementation strategy like that way we have academic partnerships uh, partnership with good institutions to do the research and become our knowledge partner and guide us on whether we are on the right track or not or, or to develop a right kind of kpis to to monitor uh, on the csr program we have the hardcore grassroots level or uh, regional partners associated with us on mm-hmm. ground to implement the project some project we implement directly some projects through the grassroots level organizations which are our partners with and then we have got uh, strategic partners where we have got national level multi year programs or say long term program so uh, before the compliance came on multi year and all such tata power had that strategy to be in the game and develop the long term strategy kind of a thing with national level partners on different aspects if you see one of the flagships is adhikar which tata power proudly says and states that it's our flagship program now from 2018 till date if you go on numbers the impact would be more than 1200 crores of uh, schemes accessed by the citizens in india in, in 17 17 state so uh, the, the problem what triggered us was people had this and there was uh, a shift coming in the political uh, situation in india and a uh, lot of schemes lot of welfare social security schemes getting published but not actually reaching to the last so that something triggered us we joined hand with hak darshak mr aniket devgar who is again a very good organization to partner with and we had a very good joint discussion on designing the program mm-hmm. we jointly discussed we created those models and implemented the scheme linkages program in india and then gradually year on year we we started developing that model creating scale reaching the scale enhancing the program to last mile kind of a thing we added a project in terms of developing the adhikar preneurs mm. developing the village level volunteer just like bhujal jankar in water project we mm. we again created that learning over here also by creating a village level volunteer to <coughs> use the app and go to the household and tell them that these all are services available for you and this is free of cost this is chargeable and all those so, so all those training mm-hmm. we provided them and that's how we 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 implemented it for 3 years and then gradually taking a next leap by bringing all the digital content at one place using those database during the covid mm-hmm. and uh, uh, doing push calls to understand what kind of problem they are facing during covid so all those database helped us 
so you can see the integration between a corporate structure the ngo sector uh, the community coming together using the database and linking them to some kind of a scheme benefit the dbt started like anything in india during this period and we we actually created lot of hub and spoke model in the community to provide those kind of benefits to the community and yearly if you see approximately 6 to 7 lakhs people get benefits out of the, this project 200 crores is the minimum resource mobilization which we do on a yearly basis so these are some kind of an impact which is actually going on so it is that kind of collaboration you need at all these stages we are implementing this program in 17 states now mm. we have got 600 plus uh, people uh, who are now associated they, we are not paying them mm. but they are the actual ambassadors who are in the villages who, whom we have trained they are part of self help groups they are part of youth volunteering uh, and they go into the village do the camp and provide benefits now so the journey started with a thought process of taking the schemes to the last mile and now it is tata power developing the model and mm-hmm. letting people do that program and earning out of it it's yes. am- amazing to hear that and again like i think just volunteering alone when you say hey there are 23000 volunteers who are engaged in activities we know for a fact it can be an easy task right i think you mm-hmm. and i last year we engaged nearly 10000 corporate volunteers in across 80 different projects and mm. we also work with 3000 volunteers throughout the year in the main flagship program which is the UNI teach program mm, mm, and mm. we understand what it takes for someone to keep them engaged and then keep yeah. them wanting to come back it's easy to get them to sign up for the first to make them want to come back again and again yeah. and engage in these activities i think that's a huge task and fight to success is amazing as an average is amazing mm. i must say that tata power is doing amazing work So just in terms of uh, volunteering sir I just wanted to know like what are some challenges that you face when mobilizing such a huge group of volunteers and again I heard that a lot of different companies say hey you want to engage 80% of our workforce in hmm. volunteering by this year hmm. so I want to know Tata Power's target for the coming years is so in terms of volunteering if you see right. target is of course to be better and better in this we want mm-hmm. to increase our PCVH one of the targets which we are working right now in terms of employee volunteering is on the unique volunteering and so we want each and every individual on a repeated basis uh, yeah. it should not be it should not be one time kind of an engagement so improve the unique volunteering is something which is very innovative in terms of nice. uh, yeah. uh, a thought so i could be part of one cleanliness drive but whether mm-hmm. i am 365 days i am working on cleanliness drive or mm. say, mentoring program or mm. any other so we want to improve on those numbers we have good numbers but we have less unique numbers so we as a company are looking for some unique volunteering numbers to go high of course yeah, that yeah. will that will have a good uh, pcvh increase also mm. and of course one of the digital improvement is something which we are looking as a mm-hmm. uh, medium term improvement in the whole volunteering space is something that that bringing some digital change or tech improvement in the whole process where people use the platform the volunteering platform which is right now titled as arpan that arpan pro portfolio platform should be like say for an example instagram kind of a thing so people engage come on the platform share their yeah, story yeah, yeah. motivate other people to be on the platform mm-hmm. so we are working on that also so having mm-hmm. a digital and a unique volunteering as a strategy of course as a target we would uh, definitely would like to achieve higher numbers in terms of volunteering hours mm. uh, from 1.5 to maybe 2 lakh hours or or if it is 1 oh, wow. hour, mm. 10% more increase in that so those kind mm. of targets are there of course there is no mm. compulsion or mandatory kind of a thing it is only mm. the kind of programs which will keep them engaged mm. so team is working continuously to give them people opportunities we also uh, collaborate with tata power on a larger scale where we have tata pro engage mm. where 365 days more than 2500 implementing organizations are associated on that platform and uh, even tata group provides a lot of opportunities in terms of mm, volunteering so th- that overall strategy to be improved day by day on this area and of course as part of csr it's more sort of in standardization what we are mm. looking at because if you see the transition which tata power is going into we are increasing our portfolios in renewables 
in mm-hmm. green energy concept with these setups are actually very deep in the village and have less kind of a population at one place so mm-hmm. they are scattered they are into hutments so those areas are still left out what we believe in our after landing to those sites and so we will be definitely looking at areas where people could be trained so skilling becomes important for us in terms of long term projects of course essential enablers is a piece which we have taken up very recently of course we were doing in bits and pieces where we have standardized and took it as an area of intervention for us where where we take care of community engagement through sports through different health program reaching to the unserved areas through mobile medical van providing multiple level of services through essential enablers piece and this flagship is something which is very much open for uh, collaborations if people want so we are now aggressively moving into transmission distribution also we have got whole odisha with us and if you see odisha as a as a geography it is totally huge and have mm-hmm. lot of potential to do meaningful csr in that area so th- those are ground zero for us right now we will be uh, strategizing ourselves we have done something and those are initial phases for us but this going on a very well pretty well people have started accepting us as in company they have started engaging stakeholder connects are very good so these are some areas where we would be scaling we are also looking for conservation programs like club energy which is again a mm-hmm. very good program for us where we we talk of the brand ambassadors and those are students and children who are who are in schools so taking up eco clubs energy clubs and doing stem education with them so those multiple programs and then you have tree plantation drive which is a virtual plantation drive also and physically we do so that's something around 10 lakh plantation annually so these are areas mm-hmm. which we would be scaling and we will be looking at so standardization impactful csr program mm-hmm. and ultimately providing a sustainable livelihood these are three nice. components yeah. very very well defined in our strategy in our policy mm-hmm. and uh, taking it forward yeah nice i think it's really exciting to hear that we feel like a lot of interesting initiatives in livelihood and environment coming up for tata power and definitely all the best from rn i think one motto that we have at uni is when it comes to volunteering is people come for the the cause but they stay back for the community and it's yeah. only when we build that community yeah. around it is when more people come in there's that influence mm-hmm. right like when you said having an idea of social media for this these people become the ambassadors they've had a good yeah. experience they come back and yeah. increase the size of the community so yeah i think we have seen witness the power of community and we're absolutely sure the more volunteering you do the more number of people that join absolutely. Yeah, thanks thanks sir for sharing that as well i think we ran through csr for tata power what the vision is and what are the few big things that are coming up in terms of volunteering and in csr projects I think one thing I wanted to ask you was what is something that you on a personal level are excited about what do you think are some emerging trends in the CSR space that you are excited to work in that you are excited to explore and develop in the future so one of the important piece which I am looking at as mm-hmm. a personal level is something that moving around ESG but mm-hmm. I mean the requirement coming globally mm-hmm. for all the countries now I mean and and we have started well in in terms of tata power in terms of india as a nation we have started well we have been um, uh, there so on a personal front i would definitely look that area esg area as as something which i have to grow i have to learn and of course right now uh, i am working closely with my sustainability team in tata power but of course i still feel that this this is an area which is emerging and this has a lot of new things coming up every day every day you experience something new mm-hmm. with certain scopes certain requirement so that could be one area which i am looking very aggressively um, to bring change also as in csr space if you see every day the government is coming up with lot of lot of changes in policy mm-hmm. lot of compliance requirements certain mandatory things to be submitted and all those things so those areas are also some important areas which are an emerging area so if you see the tourism is something which is uh, now being uh, talked about in csr of course the schedule 7 states about supporting those and the csr projects but but still that is an area which which is not that much supported in terms of 
DCSR projects or so mm. very few companies are going to it and it is largely seen as an area which is the responsibility or accountability of the government to do that so if you go see two three days before there was some discussion happening at ministry level and people um, have started talking about talking to corporates so there is some changes coming in the scheme of things where tourism could be something and supporting the heritage could be an area which would could has to be taken up by the corporates sports is something which is again an area which you can leverage to get engaged with the youth in india so that is something uh, which we should be talking about and and csr as in space i believe that this is another area which has to be looked up seriously and certain changes are also coming in this where people have now started taking up uh, supporting providing all the sponsorships to the sports people so if you speak about tata park we are in jharkhand uh, we are working with youth over there in different forms of whether it is boxing where it is the shooting so all those sports like which which mm. the people cannot afford so we we are picking up those areas and asking tata group to through their sports club mm. they train them and help them to be there so one is providing scholarship or sponsorship and sitting back and relax and and see on the tv that your sponsored proper people have been performing and one is mm. that picking up that talent and train them and then bringing them to that level of uh support and that level of performance uh, so so it's it's a whole journey which which we we are thinking of and of course this sector is also seeing it happening i mean no time this will come so these are areas of course these are part of schedule 7 no doubt about it but still some focus is required on in these mm-hmm. areas and skilling of course uh is something which is required so with lot of changes in the policies lot of flexibility in the policies by government of india these are the areas skilling is much needed and we have to train people so these are four five which i feel is important for anyone to strategize the programs and we are of course doing that absolutely absolutely i think that focusing on these other areas also help your program be a lot more holistic rather than look yeah. at one particular sector or a cause and i think one thing that i really find inspiring is the fact that whenever you've spoken about programs and how the need analysis was done and how something was identified the outcome or the last sentence has always been like but we went one step further yeah like, i think that's that's the commonality that i've seen in all your descriptions of different uh, programs i must say it's truly groundbreaking stuff and we're all really excited to see what's up ahead for you sarab and also tata groups in general and sir we want to end this with a message for our audience but also to young sir right let's assume you could go back to 2002 before you found that piece of paper with the advertisement for msw course what would you tell young sir in 2002 very simple it, it is take all the criticism as a challenge mm. prepare yourself mm. i mean It's it's challenge yourself also mm. with with mm. all the scenarios and mm. be in the market sell yourself mm. you have knowledge pro- give the exposure to other mm. people who are around you mm. join mm. hands with people and do meaningful CSR mm. so I mean it's it's all about if you have those kind of resources available you mm. I would say people like us are lucky enough that we got this opportunity we got. corporates like tata mm. and there are many such good organizations and we have lot of uh, areas to develop and to perform so uh, those who are into this profession uh, has to look in those fashion that they, they, whether we are actually making impact on the society or not through resources because i can understand <laughs> looking to the ngo sector resource crunch the issues of projects getting sanctioned mm. but CSR space there is no resource crunch you have profits you have better resources as compared to other opportunities which is not there so if anybody is associated perform in a fashion that you are creating a difference and you are not only creating a report so that's something very important so uh, mandatory reports compliance reporting all those things are okay but until unless you make a difference in the society with an impactful program and not mm-hmm. achieving anything and you are not justifying as a social work professional so that's something important and individual it is always that until unless you challenge yourself hit your boundaries mm-hmm. challenge uh, your own thoughts 
learn a new bit of thing uh, that that will not that will not come so that spark and that aggression is required so all the youth coming up passing hmm. out or into this profession thanks sir that's uh, really lovely i think this is something that i'll definitely hold on to take all criticisms as challenge okay. challenge yourself and don't shy away to put yourself out there and share ideas exchange ideas so thank you so much sir it's been amazing to listen to your story a heartfelt thank you from all of our and for gracing us with your amazing incredible story your impactful work is truly admirable and we admire the openness that you had today in sharing the experiences that you've gone through sharing the ups and downs of your life so thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you pratyush thank you team for giving this opportunity and listening to me thank you so much